Hey, I don't know if this got any publicity anywhere, but apparently I've been permanently banned from Twitter by Elon Musk for not doing something he claimed he would never ban anybody for doing. What a friggin' candy-ass, lying, hypocritical, self-contradicting, little paranoid snowflake that apartheid Clyde really is. And I was hardly the most important journalist or commentator who got it. Aaron Rupart, Donnie O'Sullivan, Ryan Mack, it's the baptism scene from the Godfather movie, and we all got whacked by Don Elon Musclione. Guys, I gotta tell you, it has become abundantly clear over the last few days that left-wing journalists cannot stand accountability. They cannot stand being held accountable for their action. And the first story of the day that we talked about was the story of Elon Musk suspending left-wing journalists, including journalists that work at CNN uh, and other you know, mainstream liberal media outlets, and the outrage in response to it, okay? All of a sudden, these people agree that suspending people's Twitter accounts Journalist Twitter accounts is, is a bad thing, <laughs> but they were totally for it before when it came to right-wingers, right? People that were conservative, they was totally fine with suspending those people, didn't matter, but now all of a sudden when they get suspended, when they get a taste of their own medicine, uh, they're freaking out, okay? Uh, again, they, they can't stand accountability. Uh, this comes after this story uh, came out about the Washington Post, which is filled with left-wing journalists. Uh, in the fact that they are having some layoffs after losing half a million subscribers uh, recently, uh, they're making some cuts, right? They're cutting some journalist jobs, and apparently the reaction to this was not great at a town hall. Take a look. The staff has some questions right now. Do have questions. Question. Yeah. And answer I think because we're journalists, you should answer them because we're a news organization that values transparency. This is our only opportunity to no, you have multiple opportunities. As representative of the guild, we have represented from the post. You meet every week, you're meeting tomorrow. We're this not is a town hall. This isn't only about the, the guild, right? We're not a to a grievance session for the it's guild. It's not a grievance Sorry. session. Thank you. Brian, you, 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 you talk you about positions you. getting eliminated. What are you going to do to protect people's jobs? Are they going to be treated like the magazine staffers were? Are you we'll have, we'll have more information as we move forward. Thank you very much. Is this yeah. really yeah. 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 a tragedy? You seem to be disrespecting this, this room. You can't walk away. You are disrespecting this room. I can't believe. This is a tragedy. Yeah. This is embarrassing. Yeah. This is embarrassing. He just walked out. Wow. Oh my God, we're journalists. You have to answer our questions. You're disrespecting us. Guys, the entitlement here from these left-wing liberal journalists is, is literally unbelievable, right? They're so entitled. They think they're so much more important than they actually are. They, they really do. Yeah, it's hard to feel bad for the people who openly advocated for people to lose their jobs uh, because they didn't want to take a back seat, right? I mean, these people were totally fine, again, with banning and censoring people, making people lose their livelihoods, uh, the ability to, leave, to, to, to feed their families uh, for disagreeing with them, but now they want people to mourn in the boohoo because they're losing their jobs because the Washington Post isn't making enough money, right? Again, hard to feel bad for these people, okay? But they're not the only journalists facing some accountability because we have to talk about another journalist here, aka left-wing extremist, <laughs> that uh, is facing some accountability for not doing his job as a journalist and again acting more like a left-wing extremist than, than doing real journalism and that is nbc's uh disinformation uh in, in internet reporter ben collins who basically got suspended from covering twitter earlier this month because he was being too much of a left-wing hack now if you guys aren't familiar with this guy uh he was the same guy that basically took advantage of the deaths of five people uh, in the Colorado mass shooting uh, that happened at Club Q for his own personal gain. Uh, basically, he tried to speak for the dead. I do want to say, though, um, am I doing something wrong here? Here are some headlines that I wrote the last six months. Fueled by Internet's far-right machine, anti-LGBTQ threats shut down trans rights and drag events. Remember, uh, there was a drag event happening in Colorado. Yeah. Anti-trans stalkers at Kiwi Farms, which is an uh, uh, anti-trans website that stalks people, 
are chasing one victim around the world, their list of targets is growing. That was a couple months ago. And I'm just wondering, what could I have done different? Seriously, as reporters, what can we do different? Because there are five dead people in a strip mall, because that was the only place they felt safe as gay or trans people in this town in Colorado Springs. And I am trying to thread this needle here. I'm trying to say that this is happening. This targeted stuff has real life impacts. They say on the internet has real life impacts. And I'm gonna fail, by the way. I'm gonna you know, freak out because it's happening. Because I wake, I wake up and I see that there are five dead bodies. But I think we have to have a come to Jesus moment here uh, as reporters. Are we more afraid of being on Breitbart for saying that trans people deserve to be alive? Or are we more afraid of the dead people? Because I'm more afraid of the dead people. I don't want, I, I don't want to wake up on a Sunday and see that all of these headlines came to fruition. Yeah, so this guy uh, who believes he's on the moral high ground here uh, basically took advantage of people's deaths, a, a tragedy, which we don't know the cause of, we don't know the motive of at all. If anything, again, uh, the, the shooter claimed he was non-binary, he was LGBTQ. So to say that this is LGBTQ hate uh, is a bit of a stretch considering that we, we don't know the actual motive as of yet. <laughs> we don't know. Uh, but again, that didn't stop him from basically trying to glorify his, his articles and the things that he wrote about uh, preceding this attack in order to elevate his own personal brand. Again, it's absolutely disgusting stuff. Not only is he a disgusting human being, uh, he also is just wrong. As he infamously predicted, he was one of the uh, left-wing liberal reporters that was sounding the alarm on Twitter being on the verge of collapse. It was going to collapse under Elon Musk after Elon Musk purchased the company and subsequently fire all the left-wing activists that were running the company. Talk to us, because I know that you've been talking to a lot of folks um, employed by Twitter. What are they telling you? What does the separation also look like, the details of that? Sure. Uh, so the most important thing that Twitter employees want to stress is that the company is a nightmare right now, yeah. and it, you cannot work there. And the website is built on sticks, and it might fall apart. So how is it cards? Um, if it falls apart by Tuesday, we're in trouble in terms of getting election information out there. The other thing they're warning to me about, wow. by the way, to regular people, like, yeah. you know, this is the thing. These people have lost their jobs, and this is what they're worried about right now. On Tuesday, uh, on, mon on Monday, let's start on Monday. On Monday, anybody can maybe buy a verification badge, right? Verif verified check. Right. Yeah. You could go and pose as anybody, an election official, a uh, public figure, whatever. And there's, they've cut the moderation staff so severely that there's no way they're going to catch up in time to these lies. Wow. So... Using Twitter as a trustworthy source of information on Tuesday is going to be a nightmare. That's what people inside of Twitter or people who just got laid off, some people who are still there are warning about because they go and talk to Elon, who is deeply out of his depth, objectively. And they don't know what's going to happen next week during the United States elections. So who is the person, what is the entity that helps identify that Twitter will no longer be a viable source that we have looked to for, for so long going forward, because we are in the age of misinformation. I mean, the timing could not be worse for all this stuff. The entity is us. We're going to yeah. learn the hard way on Tuesday if, if he does this by Monday. And he wants to. He's, he, says, he says he wants to ship this product by Monday. Uh, this is a way to get $8 out of lots of users. Um, we're going to see what happens. I, I'm, I don't mean to sound the alarm quite so severely here. But this could be really bad. And we all know how that worked out, right? One month and a half later, uh, Twitter is still alive and well. Uh, they're still doing content moderation. And all of the left-wing extremists that were working at the company clearly was not needed. Uh, they were fat, okay? Elon Musk trimmed the fat, okay? Um, yeah. Now, it has been reported that, again, this guy, Ben Collins, has been pulled off his coverage of Twitter uh, because NBC does not feel like he's living up to their journalistic standards when it comes to his reporting of Twitter, which is hilarious because NBC doesn't have any standards, right? But again, you can't claim to be objective and non-biased when you clearly have a guy covering Twitter who is biased because he does not like Elon Musk. And I'm going to show you guys that because this is the second time that we've seen somebody associated with NBC get either fired or punished uh, 
after a Fox News article or Fox News exposed them in some way. So we're going to read about this and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about here. NBC News has temporarily removed journalists Ben Collins, who covers disinformation and extremism and their intersection with digital venues from regular reporting on Twitter and Elon Musk, according to a person familiar with the matter, citing remarks on social media that the NBC uh, Universal News organization felt were not consistent with its editorial standards. NBC News declined to make executives available for comment, noting in a statement that it would not comment on personnel matters. The decision regarding Collins was previously reported by the online news outlet uh, Semaphore. NBC News made the move earlier in December after cautioning Collins several times about his commentary regarding Twitter and Musk on several occasions. According to this person, Collins remained on staff and has been active on Twitter in recent days. Meanwhile, Musk moves to silence a cadre of prominent journalists on Twitter has opened a widening schism between the social media property and several mainstream media outlets. On Thursday, he suspended the accounts belonging to the New York Times' Ryan Mack, the Washington Post' Drew Harrell, CNN's Donnie O'Sullivan, uh, Mashable's Matt Binder, and The Intercept's Michael Lee, as well as progressive journalist Aaron Rupar and former MSNBC and ESPN anchor Keith Oberman. Yeah, so uh, here's the thing, <laughs> right? It's funny because this guy is not going to be able to talk about this. He's not going to be able to cover what's going on uh, because of his hate for Elon Musk, which was called out by Fox News just a few weeks ago, right? Um, as Fox News uh, put out this article right here about Ben Collins repeatedly ridiculing and attacking Elon Musk while covering the Twitter owner. And they basically pointed out some tweets that he put out here that clearly show bias against Elon Musk that he cannot... Uh, objectively and unbiasedly uh, cover what's actually going on at Twitter. Uh, as, as he said in the tweet, he said, the scandal here is that Elon Musk discovered who his uh, company's deputy general counsel was uh, six weeks after he purchased it. So he's talking about the Twitter files here, right? Basically saying that there is no, you know, bombshell, there is no, um, you know, scandal or whatever, except that Elon Musk apparently is, is incompetent. Uh, he also tweeted out, it's an honor to watch Elon Musk invent content moderation for the first time. He's also been responding to Elon Musk with memes. The smug pilots have lost touch with regular passengers like us who thinks I should fly the plane. Yeah, so he's, again, making fun of Elon Musk actually owning Twitter. So again, this guy, you know, clearly, you know, is getting into Tiffany Cross territory here, right? Where he's letting his personal biases uh, against people get in the way of his reporting. And NBC decided to suspend him for it, <laughs> right? Again, it's just hilarious how, how it works. How these people, uh, it seems like uh, for as much as they go out to Fox News, uh, all Fox News has to do is just call them out, right? Call out some of these so-called left-wing journalists, these propagandists on these left-wing networks. <laughs> and they always seem to get punished for it, right? They always get seem to get punished. Again, it's just, it's just funny how that works, right? A lot of these guys are melting down and upset because they're getting a taste of their own medicine and, and they're starting to realize that they're not as perfect uh, and morally superior to everybody else as they've been pretending to be. So let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.